Well, it's that time for the test drive and yet another 392. This is Randy's 392. It's a 2022. It has 6,000 miles on it. And we just got done putting one tons, 39s, and our long arm kit on it. And so I'm going to take it out on the road and see how it feels. That is fun. Never gets old driving a 392. You know, then it gets quiet because it still has the factory exhaust switch for turning it on and off. One finger down the highway, no steering wheel shake, tire pressure sensors, ABS, everything hooked back up with basically everything changed. So it's fun to do these Jeeps and do so much work to them and still have them drive absolutely perfect down the highway. We'll, uh, pull up behind the shop, I'll get out and we'll do a full walk around on this bad boy. Once again, another 392 on one tons rolls out of the shop. Um, brought it in bone stock and this is what we ended up with. To start off, it's sitting on three and a half inch metal cloak coils, Spicer Ultimate 60s front and rear, and it has box shocks with the clicker for uh, high speed and low speed compression. A lot of stuff has been done to this Jeep and everything kind of worked out as cohesive uh, and the thing drives amazing. Uh, right away you'll see we went ahead and put the Rock Slide Engineering electric steps. It has the extra skid plate skid over the top of the steps and underneath here basically to protect it because Randy will be going to the Rubicon for sure. Uh, it has vision bead locks on it right now. Uh, but he is, I think he did order race lines and that's why the spare tire is not on it. So this is just to get it out the door uh, for a few months. Inside here we have the uh, American Adventure Labs uh, rear inner fender wells. And what we do when we do these Jeeps on one tons is we actually even open it up and bring this back a little bit more and trim it uh, to clear the 39s. So we found they fit the best in the wheel wells. Uh, little detail we did, we color matched the inside uh, of their logo with the Jeep color. Um, and it also has the inner fender delete with the black bolts here that covers up that spot. And then uh, uh, black covering up the Jeep color on the inner wheel well. WFO long arm, like always. The Rockside Engineering steps need just a slight trim right in the back here to clear our long arm bracket. So not much modification. Um, this Jeep happens to have the metal cloak skid plates underneath it, um, tucked up underneath, works really well. Once again, some modification to fit the long arm, but not much, but everything's protected underneath. As we move up to the front, more American Adventure, Adventure Labs inner fenders. Um, but there is a little trick going on here and we'll, uh, give you some of our secrets. So these inner fenders are not 392 inner fenders. They are the standard six cylinder inner fenders and we couple it with a, we'll pop the hood. It's a moto built um, washer bottle relocation. So if you look, peek down in here and you got to go deep in there, um, way down inside, you can see an aluminum uh, tank. So that is the moto built smaller, high, uh, low profile washer fluid tank. And the reason we do that, is you got 40s, you got three and a half inch lift, you're trying to make room for these tires in the wheel well. And so with that washer bottle smaller, this inner fender right here can be all the way back, tucked up and it keeps the tire from rubbing when it flexes. We have ADD front bumper, which is kind of cool. And uh, it actually fits the Fox clickers really nice in there. You don't have to do a bumper mod. Uh, Baja Designs lights built in and then this is kind of cool. These are the KC lights right here and these are hooked up to the factory fog light switch and then also has KC's up here that are hooked to the accessory switches. Um, one of the cool things about this Jeep uh, as we're walking by the Quake LEDs that go with the uh, inner uh, the fender hollowing out. Um, one of the cool things about this Jeep, if you take a look here, air compressor underneath the seat, and it's not just there. That's the ARB dual compressor. We always mount them underneath the seat. 
Um, the seat still slides forward and back fine. It doesn't take any other space and it's hooked up to the auxiliary switch on the dash. The lockers are hooked up to the factory locker switch on the dash um, using the Z Automotive uh, Z locker harnesses. As you see in here, there are there is no S pod um, or switch pros or anything in this vehicle. Everything's from the accessory and the lockers go from the factory switch. Back to the front here, uh, Spicer Ultimate 60s and you can see it has our billet drag link and billet tie rod um, with hydro assist hidden back there and our HD track bars front and rear. Um, this bracket right here on the Spicer Ultimate 60 is a custom bracket that we sell that allows the RAM to fit in there on the Ultimate 60 in that location. This makes it really cohesive and work well on the 392. Uh, Xeon 10S winch, um, and as you saw the RAM underneath there on the axle, it has the PSC hydro assist kit, which means steering box and pump, bracket, reservoir, all added to the front of the motor. So the electronic pump is completely deleted. One thing that I do want to add is that the 392 PSC steering box is specific to the 392s from PSC. So they've really done a lot of work playing with how much pressure goes to the RAM, drivability, slow turning in parking lots, um, and it's getting better and better. And these last few, uh, over the last year, these last five, the PSC has been absolutely spot on um, with that pump bracket and that box all working together. It feels just one finger down the highway and great on the trail. As I mentioned before, uh, spare tire isn't on yet because we're waiting on some wheels, but another ADD rear bumper, backup lights, and they are hooked up just to the reverse lights so you don't have to push a button. Um, and then this has the Motobilt heavy duty hinge. So when he puts the 40 on there, it'll be good to go uh, in the back. As you can see, factory 392 tailpipes muffler. You know, love, hate there. You have the button to turn it on and off, but I think at some point he's gonna have to do another muffler system because that's gonna hit some rocks. It's got 1350 front and rear drive shafts. So it's a 1350 CV in the front, 1350 CV in the rear. Uh, 538 gears, ARBs in the Ultimate 60s, factory transfer case, still running in all-wheel drive. We don't suggest tasing them to two-wheel drive mode. Of course, this does have a taser installed um, from Z Automotive, which removes the front axle disconnect, the fad out of the system, takes the um, factory uh, electric sway bar out of the system, and it, it also takes the electronic steering out of the system and allows you to change it to your tire size and your gear ratio. So um, running it in all wheel drive, we keep the front hubs in lock mode. So they're in lock mode. And yes, it does have standard U-joints in the front axle, um, not RCVs. This is the same as how my 392 is put together. Um, and very, very little steering wheel chatter, running in all wheel drive, no problems. The only time I could say you might feel it just for a split second is if you're launching onto the highway, you get on it and you smoke the tires at full turn accelerating off the line, you'll get a quick chatter of the steering wheel and goes away. But any windy roads, hauling ass, drifting, that kind of stuff, never feel the feedback from front axle shaft spinning in a 392. And I know a lot of people talk about that on the internet that you have to have RCVs in your front axles. Um, it would be nice, it would completely eliminate that, but having one tons and in, in, in U-joints in your axle shafts is not a deterrent, it does work in the 392s. So hopefully you like Randy's 392 and the next one's coming down the pipe.